Okay, so what are the important components of an effective firearm policy? Remember, we start with the premise that I think in today's world, particularly from a liability standpoint, you're miles ahead to have a policy in place. Now, does it, like it, does it stop that active shooter? If he is bound and determined to come in there and create havoc, you know, that policy doesn't stop any bullets. I understand that, okay? But the presence of a firearm policy protects you from some liability, and hopefully issuing a firearms policy, it increasingly sensitizes your workforce to those kinds of issues. And maybe you do get some chances to nip the problem with potential violence in the butt. So, first of all, the starting point is make sure that whatever policy you have in place is consistent with your particular state's laws. They are somewhat different. And if you are in multiple locations, your employees are in multiple locations, you have to look at each of those states, where your people are working, not where they reside, not where you're headquartered, but where they are working. So, number one, must be clearly published. I don't care what state you are, put signs up that explain what your policy is when it comes to firearms on your premises, and make sure it's in your employee handbook or policy manual, or on your website, wherever you keep policy. No tolerance for threats or violent acts, okay? I, you know, I don't have a standalone firearm policy. I have a firearm policy as part of an overall violence in the workplace, not just weapons. And that policy has a no tolerance provision when it comes to threats or any violent acts, whether they're using a weapon, a firearm, or not. Another important element in any violence policy, including a, a, a firearms policy, you need to have a mechanism where employees are encouraged to report their concerns. Okay? And it has to have an element of confidentiality, or anonymous even, the option of anonymous. Do you get some, some wacko complaints? Sometimes you do, but it's better to encourage people to bring to your attention the possibility of, of a weapon or impending violence in the workplace gives you a chance to nip it in the bud. So have as part of a violence policy and a firearm policy an encouragement and an understanding by your employees that we expect them, if they have concerns or they have some information leads them to believe we have a potentially violent situation brewing that may or may not include firearm, we want them to know, we want to hear about it and even give them an option to do it confidentially or anonymously. Address where firearms are permitted or prohibited. Again, does your state allow a complete ban including vehicles? Does your uh, state uh, only permit you to prohibit everything except in locked vehicles? Make sure your policy tells me as a visitor or employee what is permitted and what is prohibited when it comes to firearms. Who can possess firearms in the workplace? Again, if you're going to designate a security force or something like that, make that specific. If it's going to be a complete ban, have that specific. Talk about what you're going to do with firearms and vehicles. If you're in a state which says, I have the right to bring firearms on your property so long as they're in my locked vehicle, are you going to make me tell you I've got one? You know, put the onus on me, say, yeah, Oklahoma says that Charlie gets to bring that gun to work as long as it's in his locked vehicle. Uh, does Charlie have to tell you that he has a weapon? Does he have to identify? Do we want to say, okay, people with locked weapons, we're going to put you in a special location, your vehicles, because we don't want it right by the door. When you're angry, you can access it easier. And we want to be able to monitor that. A lot, of, a lot of workplace firearm events happen when you have an angry employee who goes out to their vehicle, gets the firearm, and re-enters the workplace. So do I have to tell you when I have a weapon in my vehicle? And if I report that, are you going to tell me where I'm going to park? Nothing in your state law may say I get special parking. It's not like a handicap sticker, OK? I've got a gun. I need to have it handy. Okay, I need it right by, I need it within, you know, two minutes because never know when I need that gun, okay? 
address what happens with company-owned vehicles and private vehicles using the course of work. And I would suggest to you, in most states, that it's not really as important of who owns title to that vehicle, it's whether or not that vehicle is being used in the course of employment. And make sure if people are bringing guns to work, locked in their cars, if you're in a state that permits that, then make sure they are out of sight and make sure the vehicles are locked. One of the reasons I like to have people identify in a state, if, if someone's entitled to bring firearms on the premises, as long as they're locked in the vehicle, the reason I want to know who that is and where their vehicle is, because guess what? I want to go and I want to make sure, or I'm going to have security make sure the, the weapon is out of sight, and I want to make sure that vehicle's locked. Uh, I want my policy to talk about what happens if an employee is at a customer, a client, or a work site that we don't control. I want to tell my employees we expect them to observe that third party's premises firearm rules. And no matter what, again, I don't want, you don't want typically uh, to be disarming people yourself, but you do want your policy to be very specific and reserve the right to search vehicles, workspaces, and belongings. 